Jared Haas with FrontStretch.com here at Nashville Super Speedway. Here with Jennifer Jo Cobb, who is making her first ascent since Daytona, beginning in February. Jennifer, where have you been since Daytona? Well, I, uh, I've been healing and recovering, you know, personally, um, it's been a tough year. Professionally, it's been, you know, pretty tough the past couple of years. The world is changing. Um, I just, I needed to get myself right mentally, physically. I had gained so much weight. Um, it just was time to take a little break and step back. There's no longer a reward for being loyal to the series. Many years ago, if you attempted every race, then you had the better provisional positions, etc. Now they just, they don't reward that kind of loyalty. So we have the opportunity to pick and choose which races. I am so far from being done racing. I just wanted to take a step back and, and let things recover a little bit, both internally with myself, with my team, and with the world. With gas prices the way they are, it makes being a small team even harder. You're seeing a lot of underfunded teams going away, and we don't want to go away completely. We just needed to throttle back so that we could gear back up. Why Nashville? Well, it, it's pretty easy. I, I didn't necessarily say, hey, let's do Nashville. There's, there's a ton of trucks that want to do this race. We should just throw our hat in too. But I have a great partnership with the No Hate Campaign and now Nail Polish. Jennifer, last time I saw you was at Gateway in 2021. And we talked and you told me that you were hopeful that you could get your second truck back, that number zero truck. Um, unfortunately, this is only your second attempt and we're already in the summer months. What's the biggest change from 2021 to 2022? The biggest challenge in a lot of NASCAR and with my team has been labor. Um, I don't know how we ended up with such labor shortages. I know that there's probably people out there across the country, across the world, that would love to race in NASCAR that don't realize, you know, number one, you kind of got to be in the North Carolina area to make it work. Um, number two, you, you've got to be able to work for a smaller salary because you're learning. You don't have that experience. And our team has a real niche there but people can't survive on those small salaries anymore. So labor has been, um, probably we've got all of the equipment, we've got the grit and the drive, and we've got a lot of sponsors who would support us. I actually turned some sponsorship down to run the full season um, at late last year because we just weren't having the performance we needed. And I tell my team, it's a thousand small things. It's not one big aha thing that you go by and bolt onto the truck, it's those thousand, small little things and it takes the knowledge and, and the labor force so I've got some really great loyal crew members that I'm so grateful for we just need um, a little more by way of leadership in the garage and that's what's been missing for for several years and so um, working on that and looking to the future I had three drivers with sponsors call me in the past month asking if I could field them in a truck and I wouldn't take the money because I want to do it in a way that's fair to them and I see that that is very needed right now, mm -hmm. is there needs to be a place where people like myself, people like these drivers, they've got a little bit of sponsorship money, they just need a shot, and I hope that in the future we can fill that void for them. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of you know change going on with the NASCAR, obviously schedule changes, a lot of body change in the Cup Series. Um, truck Series and Xfinity's not as much yet, but obviously there's always change in the horizon too. What's one change you would recommend as you know an owner and a driver to to nascar to you know to whatever you see whether it's track schedule how it's run what what one change would you say would be most important well i, I think that uh when you are a team owner and you look at the biggest expense and you look at the biggest waste in the world it's our tire situation um for one set of twenty five hundred dollar tires to last 40 laps I, I think something has to change with that. We shouldn't have to spend ten to twelve thousand dollars per race on tires alone. And I'm very appreciative. Goodyear has brought us some really good tires. And there's races we can go a hundred laps. We can run a race on two sets of tires. It's just not as competitive. And so, you know, if it's possible, then why aren't we doing it? You know, why do why do we have to spend that kind of money and produce that kind of waste in the world in general? Um, we have to pay to have these tires disposed of. So it's a, I think that that's one. Um, during 2020 COVID protocols, uh, they really reduced our travel, which was nice. Today at Nashville, we're doing everything in a day. I'm not normally a fan of that, 
but because it, it makes for a very long day for the cruise. But if we could reduce it to like one overnight stay, like this is in Nashville, then that's extremely helpful for the teams as well. Absolutely. And then what are your expectations going into this race for Nashville too? I, like I said, not a lot of attempts to, you're going to have to qualify on time. What do you, where do you expect your truck to lie? Well, you know, by far, for sure, we've got to qualify inside the top 32. So um, that is the number one goal. And then beyond that, you know, our goals have adjusted over the year. There were, there were years we were buying for a goal of a top 15 finish. Um, now you've got 25 multi-million dollar teams. Um, we're a fraction of that on our budget. So, you know, I think to get out there and have a good, clean race with a top 25 finish would be uh, a win-win for us today. But most importantly, um, you know, to go out there and have a respectable race, make our sponsors, the W Nashville, the No Hate Campaign, uh, now Nail Polish, all the other small sponsors that join us whenever we're on track, uh, to make them happy and to, uh, you know, just show the fans that small teams exist, the underdogs exist, we can get out here, we can have fun, we can compete, we don't have to whine about our circumstances, let's just go be grateful that we live in this awesome country and can choose whatever career path we want, if we work hard enough, we can make it happen. Absolutely, and then my last question here too, do you know your future plans is what's going on with Jennifer Joe Cobb racing too? Any more races on the horizon too? I know, like I said, it took you for a while to get from Daytona to Nashville. Do you have any more things in the plans and works um, for 2022 or what's going on with your team? 2022, there's three or four races for the rest of this year that I would like to compete in. So um, I'm going to try to piece those sponsorships together to make those races happen. Um, obviously, we've got a really strong super speedway truck, so Talladega's in there. Kansas is home. It'd be kind of nice to go back home and race. Um, I love Pocono. I've got a, you know, a, a pretty cool sponsor, uh, you know, GTT Lawn Services up there. Um, you know, performance distributors, they always step up whenever we, uh, you know, we come back and have a race. So I'd like to, you know, just build the, the sponsors' momentum and, and get to a few more races this year. Um, Talladega, Kansas, Pocono, and just try to start strong for 2023. Right now, we can't even buy a new body because of the supply chain shortage. NASCAR has a rule that if you have the old body, you're penalized, and we've got to get out of that lane. We've got to get that new body. I've tried for a few weeks to buy that new body and they can't even sell it to me. Um, so then they said when the bodies do come in, they're going to go to the, the big teams first. So little teams just can't get a break, but uh, that's not gonna determine. We'll be back somehow, some way. Absolutely, Jennifer, thank you for your time. Thank you.